I'm going to give anyone who does not believe that they are able to control their emotions the opportunity to leave the courtroom at this time. Carly asked her friend if she had seen a dead body before. And we're having all kinds of problems with the Emmys. She said three for her mom and three for her stepfather. We the jury says the defendant Carly Mass and Greg murder. I'm sure your social media feed has been filled with video footage of a young girl creeping around her foyer as she plots the cold blooded murder of her sleeping mother in the other room. This is the story of Carly Gregg. Uh, there's been clips surfacing all over the internet over the past week. Video cam footage of inside of her own house as she plots this murder. However, the murder took place earlier this year on March 19th in Mississippi. And there's a lot of controversy over this entire story. However, her trial ended Friday of this past week. I watched the entire thing, so I figured let's jump in, do a little bit of a story of what happened beforehand, during, and after, leading up to the final verdict in the Carly Gregg case. I'm your boy P. Blar. welcome to Pilar TV 2, let's jump right in. So to get it off the top, if you haven't seen the viral clip, let's watch it really quickly guys. Horrifying right. moment, 14 year old Carly Gregg shoots mom dead. She's wandering around. There's only one camera set up right in this main living room, dining room area. She goes into another room. <laughs> then she comes back, clearly with one arm, well both arms, behind her back for some reason. Then we hear three gunshots. She comes back, grabs a phone, and starts texting somebody. Again, entering the room with her hand behind her back. And that's all we get for the footage. So that was what was circulating around the internet this past week. I saved it, put it aside. Next thing I knew, my YouTube was full of live streams of the actual court hearings. So they had a jury, they brought a bunch of uh, people to stand to testify on both sides, the prosecutor side and the defendant side. And uh, it lasted all week. But before we get into that, what happened leading up to this case? It was all unveiled in court. So we know the full story now, supposedly. Carly Gregg growing up had a lot of mental health issues, dealing with issues like depression, anxiety, and potentially even worse issues such as bipolar disorder or even schizophrenia. She told me that I asked her to estimate over the last five years how much of your time have you spent in any state. What she said to me was over the last five years she thought about 60% of her time in a depressed state, about 20% of her time in a hypomanic state and about 20% of her time in a normal mood state. So I gave her the diagnosis of bipolar 2 uh, disorder. This is a long running issue running in her family that was hereditary. Her biological father supposedly was bipolar to some degree and he was a heavy substance abuser. Currently Greg was living with her mother and her stepfather. Her mother's name being Ashley Smiley and her stepfather's name being Heath Smiley and they all live together. Leading up to these events, supposedly her mental health was getting worse. She was trying out a bunch of different SSRIs and antidepressants at the time and nothing was supposedly working. She was also talking to a psychiatrist at the time. From what the psychiatrist said, she never suspected anything like this would have happened in all of her meetings with Greg. There was never any discussion of any type of violent behavior, anything to this degree. Carly's attorney uh, also says Carly is set to undergo a mental health evaluation. Judge David Morrow said that he has found probable cause in the case and ruled that Carly's bond would stay 
at one million dollars because he does believe that Miss Greg poses a special danger to others. The heinous nature of the crime, the premeditation that seems to have been involved here is pronounced. It's severe and it does concern me and there is a danger to the community. Whether there's a mental component to this or not, I think anybody can argue that to kill another human being, there's going to be a mental component involved. And that's the reality of the situation. So you have the state against Greg. Her attorneys were posing the argument that this was a psychotic break because apparently Carly Gregg claims that she has no memory of this incident happening at all. That's right, she claims that this was some sort of psychotic break with which she acted crazy and didn't come to until hours later when she was crawling in a sewer and then eventually wound up coming home. And she made claims like, I didn't, know, I don't know what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Actually, we brought her to jail more after she's the judge. She has no idea what, you know, she, she, she don't even know about her mom. But we'll get into all that because we don't even really know what fully happened at the house yet. On the afternoon of March 19th, Greg shot Ashley Smiley, a 40-year-old math teacher in Ranklin County, multiple times at their Brandon house. The shooting unfolded in Greg's bedroom after Smiley discovered boxes of vape pens, which prosecutors said were telltale signs of a teen's secret life. That life, the state alleged, involved burner phones, vapes containing marijuana, and a history of cheating at school and self-harm by cutting herself. And we saw the video footage, we heard three shots, but what unfolded after that point? Who did she text on the phone? So she was arrested on March after she allegedly murdered her mother, Ashley Smiley, as well as seriously hurt her stepfather, Heath Smiley, during two separate shootings at their Brandon, Mississippi house. Yeah, that's right, she also shot her stepfather because she was the one who was texting him off of her mother's phone. In that footage, she has her mother's phone and she's texting him under the guise of Ashley Smiley saying, when will you be home? Question mark. Rankin County investigator Zachary uh, Cotton testified at a hearing saying dispatchers received a call of a man later identified as Heath Smiley who said his child shot him and his wife on March 19th. Cotton said deputies responded to the scene where they found the injured man on the floor and a dead woman inside of a bedroom. He said the man had been shot in the shoulder with the man telling deputies his stepdaughter shot him and killed his wife. And we're having all kind of problems with him. He's okay. drugs and all right. what, what is your name, sir? The investigator said Carly was later found about a half a mile away from the home and taken into custody. Cotton detailed the scene from two security cameras found at the family home. He said Ashley Smiley was shot twice in the face and once in the chin. The footage also shows Carly hiding something behind her back, which Cotton believes is a gun. He said Carly then texts her stepfather, who was not home yet, asking when he would be home. Cotton said it was about 45 to 50 minutes before Heath arrived to the scene. In the meantime, he said Carly then decided to text a friend asking her to come over and saying it was emergency. Carly asked her friend if she had seen a dead body before. Cotton said that she said no and then proceeded to show her deceased mother who was in the bedroom and showed the gun that she used to shoot her mother. She told the friend she had three shots for her mom and she got three more for her stepdad. Two in the head, one in the chest. That is a direct quote from her friend who testified. She said three for her mom and three for her stepfather. Very premeditated and it seems like she has a full understanding of what's going on. Again, going with this whole defense argument of she's incompetent, this was a mental break, and she didn't know what was going on during this time period. She committed this crime, then came to and texted her friends asking for help because it was an emergency, while also waiting for her stepfather to arrive home in order to carry out the end of it. It seems like she was following this entire thing the entire time, to be quite honest. He told investigators, he was shot as soon as he walked into the house, noting that Heath said Carly's eyes were really big and it looked like she had seen a demon. Heath told investigators Carly was screaming and then ran off. The friend was outside in the backyard when the second shoot took place. Cotton said investigators learned Carly had been on prescription medication, including Lexapro, leading up to the murder. He added Carly allegedly changed her medication 
a week prior to the shooting. So they are t running with that, saying that this medical change could be the cause. And hey, you know, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Maybe it could be. However, once the trial took place, there were a few twists and turns. Most of Carly Gregg's family were on her side in this situation, including the stepfather that she shot. He testified saying that he believes that this is fully a medical issue and uh, he knows Carly Gregg's behavior and he went up and testified on her behalf. She was screaming out of her mind scared. Uh, it was like she had seen a demon or something. She was terrified. And my first thought was there was an intruder somewhere and she thought she was after somebody else. So then the trial takes place and pretty much just to sum it up, I'm going to go over the closing arguments of both sides, starting with the prosecutor. Pretty much they're saying that this is a cold-blooded, concise murder that was planned out. Even though Carly Gregg was supposedly a smart girl, you know, nobody carries out a perfect murder plan and that's what we see here. There are flaws, there are cracks. They start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, there's no doubt Carly Madison Gregg is the one who killed her mother, Ashley Smiley. There's no doubt that she attempted to kill Heath Smiley when she aimed a gun right at his head and shot and hit him. And there's no doubt that she's the one who hid the cameras, thus tampering with evidence. We would like to ask that you go back there and you find her guilty of all three counts because she was not insane at the time that this happened. She knew exactly what she was doing and she knew the difference between right, right and wrong. Now the defense on the other side is saying that she did not know the difference between right and wrong. They did make the overarching argument of we know that this is not a case of who is guilty and who is not guilty because, you know, obviously Carly did do it, but they're saying that she was in a completely different state of mind, taking that insanity plea, essentially. And he starts by saying, if Carly intended to kill her mom because her mom found her out that she was smoking pot, why wouldn't she have left the house after she killed her mom? Why not run? Why not call all of her good friends asking for help, terrified and crying, saying she couldn't tell them what happened? Why text her stepdad anything? Why wait uh, in the house? and what did her stepdad have to do with anything? He didn't know about the marijuana usage. He didn't have any skin in the game. It doesn't make any sense. And the state can't tell you why she did any of those things, but they have to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt, Todd said. Now, yeah, the defense wanted to pose this argument that this is just a snap, some sort of psychotic break, and all this stuff happened for presumably no real reason. That's the argument that they wanted to make, but there are inconsistencies in this, like why why would she do this and not run? Why call her friends asking for help, terrified and crying? Because she had remorse. She's a 14 year old kid, obviously. But that shows some sort of mental clarity. She's like, you know, she she came back too, almost. They were really trying to pull all these desperate arguments in order to make this happen for Carly, saying things like, oh, she's a genius. She would have known to take the cameras down prior to this. So why would she, why wouldn't she have done this? Because it's a psychotic break. Um, they tried claiming that she was going through this psychotic break all the way up until she ran out of her house and went into a sewer because the cold water in the sewer probably made her come too. Just like, I don't know, maybe st maybe this stuff could happen, but it seems like all like, hey, jury, I want you to stretch your imagination as far as you possibly can and make this happen for us. So after all this happened, there was a few options as to how the jury could reply. They could say that she was not guilty and she would walk away from the courtroom. They could say that she's not guilty with the insanity plea which means that she would uh, be sent over to a state, uh, like a state facility where they would uh, do some sort of, you know, test on her. And then they could also say that she was guilty. So the courtroom went away and came back. And ultimately, I'm going to give anyone who does not believe that they are able to control their emotions the opportunity to leave the courtroom at this time. All right. The verdicts appear to be in proper form. Verdict of the jury is count one. We, the jury, find the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. Count two. We, the jury, find the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, guilty of attempted murder as charged in the indictment. Count three. We, the jury, find the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, guilty of tampering with evidence as charged in the indictment. Please be seated, Ms. Gregg. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury is custom for the court to poll the jury. I have to do it each time I'm not being, and for each count, I'm not being rude. The quickest way for me to get through this is to simply point at you and you answer out loud. Beginning on the first row. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. 
Ma'am, is that your verdict? Sir, is that your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Sir, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? All right, all three verdicts appear to be unanimous. The court will enroll the verdict. All right. They did say that she was guilty, so she was facing life. And then they asked for parole, whether or not she should be given parole after this life sentence, which I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? She can serve like 80 years and then do parole. And you know, they're all, they're harping on how young she is saying she's only 14 guys. So maybe she should get a chance of parole. And the jury went back and came back. All right, the verdict appears to be in, one, in proper form. Mr. Gregg, if you and your attorneys would come to the podium. The verdicts read as follows. As to count one, we the jury sentence the defendant Carly Madison Gregg to life imprisonment. As to count two, we the jury sentence the defendant Carly Madison Gregg to life imprisonment. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, just as I did with the verdicts of guilt, not trying to be rude. It's the quickest way we can get it done. As to count one, we the jury sentence the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, to life imprisonment. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. On the back row, sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. As to count two, we the jury sentence the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, to life imprisonment. On the front row, ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. On the back row, ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. sir, is that your yes, verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, Ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. Sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. And sir, is that your verdict? Yes, sir. The verdict appears to be in proper form. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury, please exit. I'll be there in just a moment to release you, okay? So that's pretty much the entire Carly Gregg situation, guys. What do you make of all of this? Do you think that like she got the rightful sentence? I personally do. I think that it was all premeditated. I do understand and you know, I do respect the entire mental health situation. However, murder is never the answer. And unfortunately she did take her mother's life that night on March 19th. There are consequences in this world. You can't murder people, unfortunately. And now she's going to be in the slammer for the rest of time. That's going to do it for the story today. If you enjoyed the video, consider commenting, liking, and subscribing. It means the world to me. Join the People Are Army and make it a part of your weekly schedule because we post three times a week. If you guys want to send me a story or something to review, hit me up on Instagram at the Peeblar and I'll check it out. Otherwise, I am your boy Peeblar. It's been real, guys. And until next time, be well and peace.